The International Jugglers Association, or IJA, has been around for 70 years and has been hosting annual conventions and festivals for its members since 1948. In those 73 years, the IJA's festivals have become the focal point of juggling in the USA and much of the world. One of the things the IJA festival is known for is its competitions. The IJA, apart from being the oldest juggling organization in the world, was the first organization to host annual juggling competitions and, as a result, many refer to them as the IJA Championships. Today, I would like to talk about five different acts that won over the audience regardless of how well they did in the competition. Before I start the video, I just wanted to say I now post new content like this every week, so if you're new, be sure to subscribe. It's free. Enjoy the video. Let's go over a bit of terminology before we begin. The IJA Championships are sectioned into three different categories. Juniors, which is for solo competitors under the age of 18, individuals, which is for solo competitors of 18 years or older, and teams, which is for any group of two or more people. Alright, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's begin. <laughs> Kellen Quinn's 2014 Individuals Routine Kellen Quinn Hentoff Killian, also known as Kellen Quinn, is an American juggler from St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, there is a famous singer from Sleeping With Sirens also called Kellen Quinn. This is not the Kellen we're talking about, we're talking about Kellen Quinn the Juggler. Kellen has been around the community for quite some time and is considered an innovator in the art form. While some may know him from his videos and tricks, a lot of people know him from his performances. He's been performing for seemingly as long as he's been juggling. For example, here's a video of him performing at the 2006 Groundhog's Day competition, in which he won an award at a very young age. Not sure how old he is, but he looks to be maybe 8, maybe 9. I'm not positive. And in 2012, Kellen took gold in the juniors division in the IJ Championships, beating out juggling powerhouse Jack Denger, who despite not winning, pulled off an incredible display of technical ability with little to no drops. But that's a topic for another day. Fast forward two years. It's my first IJA convention, and it's my first time witnessing a juggling competition in person. Kellen comes out with a box to silence and proceeds to have one of the absolute longest intros to a competition routine I have ever seen, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> the premise being, he needs to catch this club between his legs behind his back, but every time he screws up, he has to throw the club off stage left and start again with a new one. After the third or fourth time, you get the bit, and it just kind of escalates from there. There was a slight problem for Kellen, being that he went a couple of minutes overtime, which is basically a death sentence if you're trying to win a medal. While Kellen didn't place, his act lives on in infamy. There were so many golden moments from this routine, like when he came back out with the second box, I just remember everyone like, going absolutely nuts. It was so hilarious, it was so funny. Even though he didn't place, he was given the People's Choice Award. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically an award at the annual festival given to the person people enjoyed most at the festival that year. And usually this award is a tool for the audience to protest the placement of an act. In this case, it's Kellen's act, which would have gotten second if it didn't go overtime. I still show this performance to my non-juggling friends to this day as an example of an incredibly funny piece of modernized juggling. Now, I'm not going to claim that I know a lot about this person. I actually just found them out about two weeks ago from one of my roommates. Arsene has been performing magic, juggling, mime, and comedy for over 30 years around the world. He is the resident magician at the One World Theater in Austin, Texas, and only recently was I introduced to this man, but holy wow, is this act unhinged. Coming out as some sort of clown caricature, Arsene does tricks with a hat, 
messes with a kendama, waters a flower, and possibly most surprisingly, goes into the audience and takes off a man's shoe and throws it all the way into the back of the theater. You might be asking yourself, why is this in a competition routine? Why? It's a very good question. In today's competition, there's certain criteria and a point system which people get points for entertainment value, technical ability, etc, etc. But back then, it was more of a, all the judges got together in one room and decided who would win based on just a discussion. So again, why did Arsene throw a guy's shoe? How did that help him in the routine? I don't know, I'm not in the mind of the guy, but entertainment value was skyrocketing. You can't argue with results. Look at them, they're, they're loving it. Though I don't know much about him, he appears to be commonly performing at Ren Fairs nowadays. If you know more fun facts about Arsan or any other competitors in this video, feel free to leave them below. Junglissimo is very much not a stranger to the IJA Championships, having won teams multiple times in the past. Junglissimo is a passing team from Austria. Originally founded by Manuel and Christoph Mitosh, the team was later joined by Daniel Liddell and Dominic Harant, and nowadays performs with numerous other jugglers. Members of the extended team include Julius Pru, Luca Fernandez, and the Cannibal Twins. But back in 2016, Juglissimo arrived at IJA as a trio, Dominic Courant, Daniel Liddell, and Manuel Metosh. A couple of notable things about this routine. Let's start off with the song choice. This has got to be the first time someone has been bold enough to use a song dropping multiple F-bombs in competition, that song being Sucker by Charlie XCX. <laughs> did censor the track. Hearing a loud bleep sound effect every 10 seconds was not something I ever thought I'd experience while watching the championships. That being said, this song, along with the bright colors and matching sneakers, really made me feel like I was watching something breaking the mold. Almost like a boy band, but juggling. Talking about the actual routine, it's funny, it's filled with great chemistry between the three, and most importantly, it's hands down some of the highest level technical passing ever performed in competition. I really loved how they managed to make a drop feel okay. Normally watching someone drop on stage kills momentum, but the chaotic nature of the performance really helped keep the act going, despite mistakes. In the end, Juglissimo became the team's world champion for their third time in 2016. Matt Walmsley is an up-and-coming U.S. juggler from the East Coast, and he is the most recent gold medalist of the Juniors Championship in 2022. His approach to the competition was interesting. Rather than come on stage with some grand theatrical piece, much like his fellow competitors, he came on stage as, quite literally, himself. Out of all the acts that night, I have to say this one stood out to me the most. I also think it's important to note that the first time Matt Walmsley ever performed was only three years prior at a juggling convention in Philadelphia. That being said, I felt like he did very well on stage and held himself up very well. And finally, I'd like to mention that his juggling style reminds me of Tony Pezzo. Very clean, very little feet movement, um, and just very well executed. Overall, I look forward to seeing what Matt has going in the future. The 
final thing I want to talk about today is the pastels from the 2013 IJA Teams competition. These are the four guys who won the teams competition at the 2013 IJA Festival, and despite being the best teams act that year, they do not think of themselves as jugglers. Asked about future performances, Daisuke Kitajima, the spokesman of the group, said, We have no juggling plans. We are amateurs. This statement is baffling to say the least. Why would a team so exceptional at what they do be denying their level of skill? The four are products of the University of Tokyo Juggling Club. Daisuke, the oldest, works for an overseas development company. Yusuke Onojima, 26, is a software engineer. Shinya Yokosaka, 26, is a chemist. And 21-year-old Yusuke Murakami was not available for the interview because he is still a student and had to leave right after the performance to fly all the way back to Japan and take an exam. He is studying economics. All live roughly in the Tokyo area and leading up to the festival practice their acts three times a week for four or five hours on Saturdays and Sundays. I think it's safe to say that the work paid off. Not only did they get a standing ovation from the routine, but the audience was audibly reacting to nearly every single trick. There wasn't a dull moment in this routine. And quite frankly, I think this routine shows what the team's competition is all about working together. Everything was so precise, well-timed, and executed. The pastels brought a magic energy to the competition that I would say IJ really hasn't matched to this day. I just hope that we'll get a new generation of passers to help us reach that competitive high again. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and also like the video. And if you really want to support me and support the upcoming Juggling Awards project, you can check out my Patreon. I'm going to be spending about $200 to make the awards and to ship them, so any little bit helps. And plus, you get exclusive weekly videos over there anyway, so win-win. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.